find out if crocodiles are OP. And yes, I kind of already know they're OP from the, the last video we did. But we're going to let Tear Zoo fully break it down. Let's get it. So when the metal hit his mug, he just sunk in place. 100K holla, chill in Bahamas. Come home to your crib and throw in your mama. What is good, Holla Squad? We are the Little Squad on the YouTube platform. This is the day we are back with another reaction. And we got our crocodiles OP. I just said that like 10 seconds ago. I don't know why I always repeat it after. But I want to see just how they stats is going crazy. All right? Because we watched the, the, the one about... How they be killing those other animals that be trying to cross the water. I forgot what video that was. But um, these things are demons. They are apex predators. Okay? I just want to see exactly what they, they stat line is. So I can properly file a grievance to the devs to have them patched. But before we do that, make sure I like, comment, subscribe, all that great stuff. Let's get it. This video was made in partnership with Curiosity Stream. <laughs> The spin attack is crazy, bro. My man got CTE, boy. Brain, brain done rattle all across the skull. There are several factors you can look at to determine where a build belongs on the tier list. Do they have any uniquely overpowered abilities? Are they responsible for major declines in the player bases of other factions? Do they have good matchups against other top tiers? These are all important, but another good indicator is how long a build's core strategies and stats have stood the test of time. If a build has managed to succeed across multiple balance patches and new Isn't the Mosasaurus technically like a crocodile, right? I think. Game expansions. That's a great indication that it dominates a highly stable niche in the meta. For example, dragonflies have been one of the top builds patrolling the airspace above swamps and lakes since the Carboniferous expansion. Oh, that's fire. By the same token, sharks have been the dominant marine force since before the terrestrial servers were even added to the game. And while not quite as old as either of these factions, crocodilians have also had a dominant hold on the same niche since even before the dinosaurs, having survived several of the harshest updates the game has ever seen. Despite this, I don't think any players are all that so. surprised at the Crocodilian's extensive domination record. I mean, this is a build which combines downright busted stats with arguably the most effective the strategy in the game, is max. resource camping. So today I'm going to break down all the important features of the max. Crocodilian build and the strategies that they use to win games. Every build has its strengths and weaknesses, so my goal with this video is that it'll be useful as a guide for Croc players trying to optimize their gameplay but also for other players that need help countering the Crocodilian's infamous strategies. This video is meant to apply to both crocodiles and alligators, because even though there are a few subtle differences between the builds, overall their game plan is very similar. Alright, so first, the croc's biggest strengths. First and foremost is their bite attack. The croc's bite is the strongest in the game, able to one-shot most low to mid HP targets, and deal serious damage even Man, to the drug them up players. out of there, boy! One important thing to note is that this bite deals crush type damage, making it one of the few attacks in the game powerful enough to overwhelm most defenses. Even the high level armor seen in builds like the turtle and armadillo aren't enough to stop it. But as powerful and damaging as the croc's bite is, crocodilian players actually aren't optimized for direct damage. In fact, most tank builds can recover from a single bite without much consequence. Oh, wow. The Crocodilian's strategy revolves around being able to bring down large targets, usually ones that have a high enough base HP to survive several powerful attacks. That's why, despite having the strongest bite force in the game, in terms of pure DPS, a Croc's bite is surpassed by sharks due to their serrated, blade-like teeth. While a croc definitely could Bro, spec into this type of tooth, whole tail for the relevant matchups, the crocodile's curved conical teeth are more useful. These teeth make the crocodile's grapple much more difficult to break out of, and this is where the crocodile's ability to take down tank builds really shines through, as their infamous grapple combo, the death roll, is one of the most powerful attacks in the game and can tear through the HP of even the bulkiest players. Let's continue with the croc's other- You see the hippo right there? The hippo like, boy, y'all better handle that over there because I'll box up all of y'all right now. Strong points. The most important ones are going to be the two abilities they use to maximize their effectiveness in the water, for both stealth and mobility. First, their rudder-like tail grants them a massive speed boost while swimming. This is what shifts many a matchup in their favor when in combat in the water, as most of the croc's potential targets easily outmaneuver it on land. 
And second, their nostrils and eyes being situated on top of their heads grants them a unique ability to remain almost completely hidden underwater while still remaining vigilant of their above water surroundings, and allows them to keep their stamina topped up by not forcing them to hold their breath. All right, now let's get into the croc's weaknesses and then discuss optimal strategies and what? counterplay. The croc's biggest weakness is its reliance on water. This isn't that big a weakness, as just about every player needs to visit a watering hole at some point. Thanks. If your party migrates, you'll most likely need to cross a river at some point in order to find more food. But even if you play as a non-migratory build, you'll likely still need to top up your thirst meter every so often to avoid serious stat debuffs. Still, it is a potential vulnerability. If the water That's in your crazy. preferred server begins to dry up, an occurrence that has become more and more frequent in the Anthropocene meta, yep. this can greatly increase the difficulty of your gameplay by removing your stealth and mobility bonuses. Crocodiles don't respawn in the water, and instead must build and protect their nests on shore. Objective defense is always a tough portion of any player's video. quest line, <laughs> but doing so in a vulnerable state is even more difficult. Another big weakness is their reliance on the death roll combo to score kills. Even though it's a guaranteed kill if the full combo finishes, executing the entire move requires uninterrupted focus on a single target for a significant period of time. As with most grappler builds, this leaves the user quite vulnerable to attacks from your target's party members. Oh, so yeah, how facts. can crocodile players best mitigate this weakness? And how can other Hippos players out here saving it? the world, boy! <laughs> so for crocodile players, the number one thing you need to prioritize during an attack is dragging your target into deeper water. This accomplishes three things. One, it separates the target from their party. Okay. Two, it puts them into a position where their mobility is reduced because of the negative terrain modifier from water. Mm. And three, it inflicts the drowning status effect, quickly draining the target's stamina and reducing the number of opportunities they have to counterattack. Of course, this isn't without risk. Dragging a target requires a lot of stamina, and if your stamina runs out while your target is still struggling to get free, they may escape, or worse, counterattack. You can mitigate this by attacking alongside the other crocodilian like, hey, as they can help you drag away your target quicker and smoke. reduce their chances of escape <laughs> even further. Of course, this means you'll be splitting the loot, but it's worth it for bigger kills. For you non-croc mains watching, obviously the absolute best strategy is simply to be large and or strong enough to resist being pulled into the water. If you're the one doing the pulling, the croc player isn't going to continue their attack for watching? long. But if that's not an option, there are still a few tactics you can try to make your odds more favorable. The first is avoiding deep water. If you need to cross a river or find a spot to drink, you'll be safest if the croc would need to drag you a great distance to get you somewhere you couldn't stand. Plus, it's a lot more difficult for a croc to hide in shallow water, so you'll be less vulnerable to surprise attacks. If you're a player with the ability to fly or to climb, you might assume this advice doesn't apply to you, since you can stay out of reach of a croc attack. However, one thing to keep in mind is that the croc's rudder tail ability has the secondary effect of granting it a greatly increased attack range while in deep water, as it can launch itself a considerable distance to strike targets above the surface. This is a relatively slow and highly committal option though, That's so crazy. my advice to flying players is that if you need to approach the surface of the water, keep moving, as striking a moving target would require a pretty insane read on the part of the croc player. It's not impossible though, so don't get greedy. That's tough. Next, I recommend bat, staying boy. with a tight-knit party that's willing to fight alongside you. As mentioned before, the croc's death roll combo is vulnerable to being interrupted. So if your teammate is being attacked, you may be able to save them even if your attacks don't do all that much. See, I rock with the elephants. Them boars be letting their homies get jumped. The little elk joints, they be letting their people get jumped at. Yeah, look, the elephants see one of their homies, you know what I'm saying, about to be down for the count. And they rush. They put hands and feet on the croc, boy. I rocks with them. damage. Of course, there may be other crocs around, so you're taking a risk in doing so. But still, crocs really can't do much other than flee to deep water if they're being attacked from multiple directions. So coordinated attacks are paramount. This advice also translates for any player trying to loot crocodile nests. This is by no means easy, but since the croc's nest will be on land, the lack of their mobility bonus will make the croc less capable of catching you. The best strategy is to continuously bait out attacks, luring the croc out into the heat. Eventually, this will daze the crocodile, allowing you to loot their nest uncontested. If you're a croc, don't worry though. There are ways to better protect your nest. Making sure there is a patch of shade close to the nest is important to avoid being dazed from the heat exhaustion status effect. That's Another tough. surprisingly powerful and underutilized strategy is to ally with bird players who also nest in the sand. They can protect your eggs from being looted by the more nimble players, 
while you can protect their buried eggs from being stomped on by the larger players. Are they out here teaming? Now, one piece of advice I see tossed around is the idea to spec into abilities that would make a crocodile less reliant on water. Things like longer legs, replacing claws with hooves, and so on. These ideas have actually been tried in the past, and have never really caught on. I get a lot of tags on Twitter asking to mention how overpowered terrestrial crocodile builds were. However, I think history shows the opposite. The two main times terrestrial croc builds have surfaced have been during the most chaotic, underdeveloped metas. First, during the Triassic, aka the expansion that followed the most heavy-handed series of nerfs and bans great, the game had ever seen. And like the Paleogene, the expansion that followed the mass ban that removed dinosaurs and pterosaurs from the game. Both of these instances were at a time where the previous top tier predator build had been banned, and every faction was taking a shot at trying to control that niche. In the Triassic, builds like Postasuchus were great at terrorizing the Synapsid player base. The top tier Synapsid, Lystrosaurus, was dominating the meta, so having a good matchup against them meant a free top tier spot. That's However, tough. these terrestrial proto-crocodilians quickly lost their top tier status as the more mobile dinosaurs started competing. And in the Paleogene, almost the exact same thing happened. Galloping crocodilians dominated the early meta, but once the mammal player base started competing for the top tier predator spot, once again, the croc yes, player base sir. couldn't keep up Big and was forced in back chat, into boy. the traditional aquatic ambush role. <laughs> So yeah, sorry Cheetah Gator fans, you can try again after the next major the balance patch, Gator but for now, there's no shame in sticking to the tried and true game plan Crocs have perfected over the past several balance patches. They're undoubtedly a top tier predator and I can't see their placement on the tier list changing anytime soon. Hopefully this video did a good enough job covering the Crocodilian's optimal strategy and counterplay. Okay. Much of the footage featured in this video is from a documentary called Caring Killers, a film which explores the Nile Croc- What kind of title is that? Caring killers, bruh? Ain't no way. Crocodile builds hunting prowess, <laughs> but also focuses on showing off the dedication and intelligence demanded from crocodile mains as they guard their respawn points and help new croc players get started. Okay. It's an impressively interesting documentary and goes into a lot more depth than I'm able to do in a single YouTube video. If you're interested in watching it, you can gain access to Caring Killers, as well as thousands of other high-quality non-fiction titles Bro, by whatever signing cameras up for Curiosity they done, Stream. Whatever cameras they done put in a while to capture that, I gotta download Curiosity Stream. I ain't gonna lie. There's way too much valuable information on here. All right? I enjoy YouTube, but I be trying to find, like, the smart channels, and I be... Oh, I found this new channel called Brew. Gotta, gotta watch some of them vids on here, too. But listen, y'all let me know how y'all feel about this down below. Crocodilians are OP. I give them they OP. Uh, I will be writing a, a letter to corporate <laughs> to say, uh, the, the corporate, this ain't fair. We the top dogs. You know what I'm saying? The the, the humans. And uh, they, they, they threaten us. They, th they threaten in our uh, superiority, all right, with all this OPness. Everybody, I think everybody in S tier should just be moved down to, to, to A tier. Patch them to, to move them to A tier. That's... Smally request. <laughs> all right. But listen, y'all like, comment, subscribe, all that great stuff. Remember, we are the littest squad on the YouTube platform. And until the next time I see y'all, we out of here.